Hey, quick note before today's video, I'm doing an upcoming video about the best cartridges for elk. If you have shot, you know, 20 plus elk yourself or been there when they've been shot, will you please go to backfire.tv slash elk survey? I just want to ask you a couple questions about what cartridges worked and didn't work for you for that upcoming video. Ooh, the sting of regret. None of us like it, especially when we're making choices on these guys. Before we get into the mistakes that I've made, though, I want to tell you about a couple of guns that nobody will ever regret because it, they're not that expensive. Um, I asked my kids of all the guns we have in the, in the gun vault, if you could pick one, you know, house is burning down, what, what would be the most? And this is it. This is the one we enjoy the most as a family. This is a $350 CVA Scout. It's a hinge design here. Uh, it, we shoot subsonic 300 blackout ammo in it. And so with the hinge keeps the sound in here and then a suppressor on it. It makes it just dead silent. I've showed that in a video before, a couple million of you watched. That's a dang fun gun and it's cheap. Similarly, if you need something that's more maybe utilitarian, I mean, when has anybody ever regretted a Tika T3X? They have an excellent action, famous for the action, good accuracy. They're just well-made good options. Even a tiny bit less than that, is a CVA Scout. Accurate, threaded muzzle, Cerakote, decent stock. Like, you want to go hunting? Get this chambered in whatever you want and you're set. So, these are mistakes where I've strayed from the tried or true. The two guns you'll never regret are either one, the category of a gun that you're just getting for fun, it's just cool, or two, just one of the standbys that just always seem to work. Here's my first mistake. This is a Bogara Ridge chambered in 300 Win Mag. The reason I regret this is because of extreme ammo pickiness, and I mean extreme. So I was headed to South Africa for a hunt just a few months ago, and I wanted to bring something that could really knock some things down. So I wanted to get a 300 Win Mag, and I really like Bogara rifles. Showed them tons of times on the channel, but this one really let me down. I have spent as much on ammunition as I spent on the gun <laughs> because I tried one load, groups are one and a half, one and three quarter inches, tried another load, another load, and I had maybe the most, the 48 most frustrating hours of my life trying to find a load that this thing liked. 300 Win Mag is a cartridge that can be pretty picky. Uh, because there's a lot more free bore, a lot more space in there for that cartridge. Sometimes you have to find just the right load to get it to work. I probably should have picked something more reliable because I was down to the wire. Up on next trip. is a gun that I just don't like overall. And that is the Christensen Ranger. My concern with this gun is the durability and the feeding. Durability, I have a couple problems with. One, the paint chipped off the very first day that I used that thing. It was in a soft case, but there was like a tiny little opening that rubbed on something and just really marred up the finish. Did not give me a lot of confidence in how durable that finish is going to be. And the bolt handle here, that is the skinniest little weak bolt handle I have ever seen. That thing is tiny. Um, don't, I have some concerns there. I have heard of people breaking those, but then also, the feeding has been a consistent problem on this. When you're getting a 22, like feeding is half the battle, right? Because it's dirty and you gotta clean them constantly. Um, and with it being such a tiny little case, it's just hard to feed very well. And sure enough, feeding is a major problem here. And so I look at this, I'm like, man, I kind of fell for the lipstick on the pig when honestly a Ruger 1022 less and would have given me better results. Up next in guns that I regret, this is an Altor pistol. You may have seen these around. This is a like under $100 option. It looks like a hot glue gun. The reason that I regret this is I don't feel safe even having this around because it violates so many conventions of how a firearm works. Aside from the fact that you have to remove the barrel in order to load a cartridge, and in order to remove the barrel, you have to pull the trigger, which already is throwing up alarm bells everywhere. The real concern that I have here is 
The way that this gun operates is when you pull the trigger, the gun does not go off. The gun goes off when this angled piece makes your finger slip off the trigger and that's when it would go. So the scenario that I could easily see happening, and again, there's plenty of safety information out from this company, but um, I, I don't read directions every time and I could easily see this creating a very unsafe situation. Somebody pulls the trigger, it didn't go off, and bang, they let go and all of a sudden it does. I don't feel personally safe around it. Again, the company put out lots of engineering and information about it. I just worry about breaking too many conventions that people don't know how to use it. Now, I have a love-hate relationship with the Ruger American. I love them, absolutely love them, because obviously a Ruger American is cheap and they are accurate. Ruger Americans are just known for accuracy, especially for that price point. But there are a couple issues that I have had with a couple different Ruger American models. Um, first is this one. So just a simple Ruger American Predator. Uh, and again, very accurate, sub MOA, shooting great. But the feeding, it's right here, the action on a Ruger American where we usually fall down. And we've just made a rule in our family, me and hunting with my boys, if a gun doesn't feed 100% of the time, it doesn't hunt. We've just had too many times where, you know, we're sneaking up on the animal, now we're going to chamber a cartridge, and ah, it won't go, and it's jammed, and, and we lose the animal. Or we're making a follow-up shot, and it's just not feeding right. And so a gun has to feed 100% in order to go hunting with us. Now this Ruger American Go Wild Edition is a nice upgrade. It has a much better tri uh, magazine on it, which aids in the feeding but it has a different problem. It's actually not really the gun's fault per se, but it is a mistake uh, that I regret, and that is this. The, this is chambered in seven PRC, and so because that's a brand new cartridge, pretty much got two choices. You got Hornady Match, and you got Hornady Precision Hunter Ammunition. There's also some Outfitter, but whatever. Right now, because that's still a brand new cartridge, those are your choices. So we got this because we wanted to go hunting and we wanted something a little bit deeper penetrating for the bigger animals, which is why we picked 7PRC. It shoots Hornady Match really, really, really well, but it doesn't shoot Hornady Precision Hunter well at all. And we really need this for a deeper penetrating hunting cartridge. And so this gun will just kind of sit here. It didn't meet the purpose that we wanted it to do. And so I think the issue there is Maybe, uh, maybe a tiny bit on Ruger, not really their fault. The issue is just, it takes several loads to find a good one sometimes. And so if you're choosing the new cool kid cartridge, be aware that if you're going with factory ammo and not hand loading this thing, what, exact, what, what are you gonna do if one of those loads doesn't work? You may be stuck until more ammo Another comes regret is unfortunately a very, very accurate fine rifle. This is a Bagara Premier Approach chambered in 22250. What I was wanting to accomplish here is to create my ultimate coyote rifle. I already knew I wanted to have a nice bipod on it because often you're sitting when you're shooting. I ended up not loving the Swagger bipod. It's just too shaky. I knew I wanted a full featured scope so I could shoot a little longer if I wanted. And I knew I wanted to put a suppressor on it. And what I didn't account for was the weight of the gun itself. This gun itself is a chunk of lumber. It's got a pretty thick contour barrel for, uh, for a 22 250, a heavyweight fiberglass stock. And so when you add everything up, this thing is too heavy to be schlepping around the hills. Let's weigh this, see what it actually is. Error, <laughs> it's too heavy for the scale. It's too heavy for the scale. I'm gonna guess this is 15 to 16 pounds. It's pretty heavy. And so if you're hiking in a mile here and there, coyote hunting, it's not gonna break you, but it just, every time I pick it, I'm like, oh man, maybe I just wanna bring a simple 243 or something. It's just too heavy. So is it the gun's fault? Well, I mean, it's heavy, but I knew that when I got it. Um, and I knew I was going to set it up. And so I think my regret is maybe on me here because I should have kind of thought through what my full build would look like and realized that this probably wasn't gonna be an option that I loved. 
but it is stupid accurate and maybe with a different stock and some different accessories I could make this thing great because it's shooting almost half minute with nozzler of Armageddon ammo. You've been watching the channel for a while. You knew I was going to be reaching for this thing. This is a Mossberg Patriot in 308. I've owned two Mossberg Patriots in 308 and both of them were had such significant accuracy issues. I mean, it was pie plate accuracy. Tried a ton of different ammo, tried everything, and they just don't shoot. Now, some people have an awesome, awesome luck with their Mossberg Patriots. Hootie Who's had a couple of good ones, but I don't know what else to say. I mean, it's we're not talking. We're talking about can't always keep shots on paper with the Mossberg Patriot 308, and so not one that I would love. Now, the other that I have had issues with is really any rifle that doesn't have a threaded barrel. The issue is before I got suppressors, no big deal. I didn't really care if the muzzle was threaded, but so many guys, eventually you get a suppressor and then you're like, dang it. You know, ideally you'll, you'll get some of your older rifles threaded and then you're, you're okay, but it's extra time and expense and money. And I want to show you some numbers here because it's not always possible. Some hunting rifles, to have those really thin profile barrels, especially at the end. Let's take a number. I'll say we have a 308 caliber rifle. Um, so the diameter of the muzzle at the end might be 0.61 inches. So we probably can't get 5 8 24 threading, which is most common for the type of suppressor that most hunters are using. Probably got to go, gotta go um, half by 28. And so that's a 0.457 undercut. And so that leaves 0.149 inches of steel from the undercut to the bore of the barrel. You divide that in half because half the steel's on one side and the other. And so we're talking about 0.0745 inches of steel. It's just not enough. And so one thing, that I, as much as I love the, the Tika T3X, some of the models have really skinny barrels. Really every company has some of those really light ones. Right now, I just, I would have a hard time picking any rifle that doesn't have a threaded barrel because either a break or a suppressor is going on a lot of the time. If I had to distill this down into one mistake overall, it's where I left the tried and true, a few that I just know are going to work, or I wanted to buy something fun, something like a, is this it? 8.6 blackout, heck yeah, man. This is rotating the bullet at 500,000 RPM. I got this gun because it's fun. Excited to take this thing on a hunt actually coming up here. It's never the wrong answer to pick something fun or pick something reliable. Usually the guns that I have regretted were where I have something that works and I wanted to get something because that's 10% better. I kind of fell for the marketing and it, sometimes it isn't that way. It's the same thing I might say in pistols. You know, you whatever have a Hellcat and you're like, oh, but I want the P365 or whatever else. And it's like the differences are so tiny that I find that I just need to ignore marketing. If I have something that fits that need, skip it. Go get something fun or reliable, but not just more of the same trying to get 10% better. Hey, thanks everybody for watching a backfire video and we'll see you in the next one.